All right, hello and welcome back to Tom Q's Tech Tips. Today we're just talking about a few thoughts I have about the Blackmagic Camera app and the Nucleus Nano 2, which I just repurchased after about not having it for a year and a half. So anyway, number one is I had this thought. I don't, I don't know what, I, know, I do know what brought it about. It, it actually had to do with so let's just go over here for a second and I think I could probably zoom out on this view to a wider view. So some of you might have seen the video I made about two weeks ago, three weeks ago on the DJI Ronin series of gimbals that can be controlled remotely with an I, another iOS device. I mean, you, you might have a DSLR in your in your Ronin but you, with a another iPhone or an Android device you can control the panning and the tilting of whatever camera is in the Ronin and it's called a feature called force mobile it's just exactly what I've been looking at for, looking for for a long time but it only does the panning and the tilting so having touched the nucleus nano 2 a year and a half ago I knew how smooth it was for the zooming. So anyway, I was just thinking about that again. And I had this crazy thought of maybe if when you pair it, if you were to pair it with, you know, the, a controller version of the iPad, of the Blackmagic app, the one that's controlling the multiple different views. If you were to to do that, when you click on one of the different views, would you be able to reach over and do the zoom feature for the camera that you're clicked on? So it's one of those thoughts. It's like, oh man, I'm not going to be satisfied until I know the answer to this. So because it would just be too awesome if it worked. And let's just switch back over to this view right here. All right. So I reached out to Tilta technical support and the response was we don't know of course it will control the iPad's camera that it's connected to but we just don't know if it will do the other I guess they don't have nucleus nano 2s and iOS devices laying around so so anyway I wrestled with the thought of purchasing it again if I do purchase it again and it doesn't work, would I want to send it back? And it's like, you know what? I think I want this badly enough to where I would be I would be content that it controls one camera. But man, would it, wouldn't it be awesome if it controls all of them? So went ahead and purchased it. And as you can see, I'm what do I have selected? I'm not even on. I don't even have this view selected. I have. I mean, I don't have this view selected. I have this one, and it's only controlling the one camera. So, so anyway, that doesn't work. But part of the reason for this video is Blackmagic could it possibly work with the Nucleus Nano 2 without buying anything additional? Um, just let the commands of the Nucleus Nano 2 just go through to whatever device is live. So that's a thought, a question. Um, let's move on to the next one. Um, number two is synchronization of input from the camera app to the Nucleus Nano 2. So what do I mean by that? So let's go back to this screen right here. And, um, you know, obviously the Nucleus Nano 2 is talking to my iPro, iPhone 12 Pro Max. Um, and if I come over to the the iPad that's controlling all the cameras and I click on the, the lenses, maybe click on the dolly zoom or whatever. And I, oops, I need to be on this one. Also, why does the menu system have to go back when you switch from camera to camera? I can't anyway. So let's see, I'm controlling that camera. I'm going to jump out to one X and it works perfectly. So the camera app, took control over the zoom level and zoomed back out to the one X, but the nucleus nano two did not change. So it's, 
it still thinks it's zoomed in at the higher level. So if I touch this, it jerks back to that place where it was before I tinkered with the Blackmagic camera app. So what I'm asking is, could the Blackmagic camera app send feedback to the Nucleus Nano 2 when you do any tinkering with it on the camera app? So that when next time you touch this, it doesn't do what it just did there. So, so anyway, that's a question. Can it do that? And then I'm thinking, let's go back over to here. If it can't, that's where this guy comes back in. So I had this thought before Blackmagic actually came up with the, the iPad idea that you where you can control the different cameras that are plugged up to it. So um, I didn't know that that was something they were even thinking about. So I had this thought, I'm trying to get away from Filmic Pro or Movie Pro, this, this black magic thing is seem, seeming pretty good, but I need a way to, con to remotely control the cameras that I have hooked up to it. And so this was my thought. And when they released the, the iPad version, I'm going to just I'm just going to be calling it the iPad version, the one that controls the four different things. When I saw when I saw that I was like, "Oh, we don't need this. This that this whole iPad thing is much better." But then when I when I got this back, um and just the ability to reach over and physically do the panning and the tilting with my own hand and barely even have to look at it cuz I can I I can be concentrating on other things. When I'm doing conferences, I've got like 15 things I'm doing. And uh, so I, if I can just reach over and touch the device doing the panning and the tilting or the zooming, it just got me thinking about that again. And it's like, so if it's not possible to let the one Nucleus Nano 2 control the multiple cameras that are connected to um, to the controlling app, controlling version of the app, then something like this piece of hardware that then communicates properly with the Blackmagic camera app that does have the two-way communication so that if you zoom in the app, this device picks up on the zoom. If you zoom here, the app picks up on the fact that you've zoomed and, and all that. So I think you get the idea. So anyway, that is um, just something that I've been thinking of. So another thing, and the final thing, final thought, is the ability to connect the Nucleus Nano 2 to one of the cameras from, from the Blackmagic camera app controller. So right now, well, let's just go into settings here. So... This is what I mean. So if I go in here right now, so I've, I've got the camera with my face is the 12 Pro Max. I have it connected to the Nucleus Nano 2, but if I didn't, I can't do that from here. I have to actually go over to the camera. Um, in my case right now, it's flipped around the other way, so I actually have to flip it around go into the settings there, pair this with the Nucleus Nano 2, and then I can, then I can do it. I can't, I can't, there is no accessories option in this list. So anyway, that's just a thought. Could we throw accessories into here like it's over here on the iPad section? So here's like a full list of things. There's my accessories. And I click on this because it's paired to the, the iPhone 12 Pro Max. It's not an option here. So what I, I could, I can go this one direction. So let's just do this real quick. I'm going to go in, tap on settings, turn off Bluetooth. And that's going to unpair it from the 12 Pro Max. I'll turn it back on. And anyway, I'm going to go into back over here. Now I can select the Nucleus Nano 2. And when I go back to camera, I am now controlling the iPad, the iPad's camera. So, but I won't be able to go back. So even if I was to turn these things off because 
in the settings, there is no accessories underneath the 12 Pro Max. Now I actually have to go back to the physical camera and add that back. So anyway, that's a question. This one seems kind of like more feasible. It would be a, a few taps, but I would actually be able to remotely switch between cameras without going over, you know, walking over across the audience to different cameras that might be set up to actually pair to pair the uh, Nucleus Nano 2. So, those are my three thoughts concerning um, concerning Blackmagic Camera. Um, most of you, if, if anybody's made it this far, uh, you, you can probably be dismissed, but I have a couple of thoughts for uh, Tilta regarding the Nucleus Nano. So if you want to stay tuned for that, you can. Um, all right, so Bluetooth always on. It is not always on. So let's let's just go back to this view for a second. And as far as I understand it, maybe there are some scenarios where you would not want Bluetooth on, but I can't do anything with this device with Bluetooth off. It has to be paired wirelessly with one of my cameras, one of my one of the Blackmagic cameras. So the question is, if I turn this thing off, just press the record button for a couple seconds and I'll turn it back on. It comes on comes on very quickly. I'll give it credit for that. But I'm going to go into settings now and go to Bluetooth. When I turn it on, Bluetooth is off. So I actually have to go into the menu system, go into Bluetooth, turn that on, and now I can actually go over and pair it with one of my cameras. We could go back over. I can't do it without flipping them around now, but um, I can go back over to this iPad, go to accessories, and I can now pair it with this. So anyway, that's number one. It's like, couldn't, maybe there's a reasoning, maybe there's some reasoning on why, why this has to be. Maybe it's a battery life thing. Um, I'm willing, I don't know, let's, uh, let's go over here for a second and let's tap that and let's go out to one X on that. Um, I'm willing to have this thing hooked up to power all the time. So if it's a battery level thing, that can't this setting be on me? It's like, couldn't there be a setting somewhere where I can choose that whenever this thing turns on, the Bluetooth is on? All right, second thing. Let's go back over to here. Second thing is, can I, why can't I control the Nano 2 while I'm in the menus? Okay, so let's just go back to this view for a sec. If I flip this, I just paired this with the internal camera for the iPad controller, but it's not it's not working right now. So I actually have to leave the settings menu, and it's kind of, sometimes it's hard to get out of there. But anyway, before the controlling works. So, I mean, again, I understand the potential reasoning for this, maybe you don't want it to accidentally be making changes that you won't be seeing visible until you, anyway, but can't that be on me? It's like, could I please just, once I've paired this with something, no matter where, where I'm at, can it just not, can it just not work? So it's like not working again. So, so anyway, that's number two. And then if you were to, let's go back over to here. If you were to potentially make in any of these changes, which I would assume would need a firmware update, could the firmware change log on the website like be updated? So, like right now, if you go to the website, this is in September, this is October 6th of 2025. The last firmware change log is from December 24th of 2023 with firmware 231221. And uh, when I updated, I got this, I, I bought a used one from B&H. Um, thought it could, might even be the same one that I sent back a year and a half ago, but it's not because I did have to do a firmware update. But let's go into um, the system and go to firmware update. Oh, come on. 
All right, my hand wheel is on 240418. So what actually happened? Um, what actually happened between 231221 and 240418? And how would I know? Anyway, it's, it would just be nice to know what features I'm looking for um, that you might have changed. So, and then if you're doing any more development on this product, which I, I kind of wonder, are you doing any more development on it? It'd be nice to know what changes get made. So, so anyway, there's that. So, but the primary purpose of this was just to offer the thoughts about the two of them together. So, um, you made it this far. Thanks for tuning in to Tom Q's Tech Tips. Hope to see you again soon. And uh, if you've got any questions or comments, you know where to put them. Thanks and have a good day.